In this little mini series, I'm walking you through how cars questions are worded and the specific keywords that the AMC frequently uses so that you can recognize them and just know by the phrasing of the question how you should answer that individual question to speed up your car's section of the exam and make you more efficient in getting them right. For those of you that don't know me, my name is John. I'm a fourth year medical student. I'm currently on the interview cycle right now and I run this MCAT YouTube channel and the associated business with my little sister who's a third year medical student, Maggie. It's our hope that making these free teaching videos will increase the accessibility of quality MCAT prep materials and get you started off on, a, on the right track. And then if you decide that you need more tailored help that you would look towards our books and our courses rather than some of the big box names. It's our goal that you would take advantage of these free resources. And then if you decide that you need more personalized help that you would look towards books written by medical students and rather than some of the big box companies. But let's talk about cars. In the previous video of this little mini series, I talked about two question styles. The first one is the suppose that question style, and the second one is the reference question style. So check out that video if you haven't already. But in this one, we're gonna talk about two additional ones. These are going to be questions that you probably remember this phraseology. The first one is going to be anything that starts with according to the passage or according to the author. Now, whenever you see one of these questions, this is not a straightforward question, okay? You're gonna to have to read between the lines, and this is actually one of the more common question types on the MCAT if you break it down. If you stick around to the end of the video, then you'll see how we came up with all of these as well as how you can access them before you take your MCAT. So questions that are saying according to the passage or according to the author are frequently asking you to make some kind of logical leap about how the author would feel about the question stem. Now let me tell you an easy way to do that in the literary elements that they're actually testing on. So they're testing on two components of the core four. The core four are the four competencies that we teach through our MCAT prep, and that's tone, main idea, arguments, and author's intentions and motivations. We have tons of videos on that. For this question stem specifically, you're gonna to have to use two of those, and I'll tell you the correct order to go in, but first let me give you an example of an according to the passage style question. You could see a question that says, according to the passage, Picasso would have been a more prominent author had he blank. Now you could go back and reread the entire passage, and you will not find where the actual author of the MCAT passage stated how he or she believes uh, Picasso could have increased his popularity and his fame. But what you may end up finding is something to the tune of why Picasso was loved and how he came to fame later in his death. And that will more than likely be the main idea. And so what you'll have to do is you'll have to extrapolate that main idea and figure out which of your answer choices is agreeing with it. But before you do that, the most important thing with these questions is first you have to make sure that the answer choice that you're picking agrees with the tone. And tone is kind of like layered, just like everything is in the MCAT. It's all onions, right? It's all layered and it all stinks. <laughs> so first you have to make sure that your answer choice agrees with the tone. And I would start by saying, does the author agree or disagree with this? Does the author like Picasso or does the author dislike Picasso because that's going to help you rule out an answer choice or two. If you note that the author likes Picasso in my previous example, then you're probably going to be able to cross one out that says something to the tune of there's no way that Picasso could have increased his prominence early because his prominence was created by death or something like that. It'll be a little bit tricky um, but you can rule it out because you know that the author doesn't agree with that. The author likes Picasso. The author thinks Picasso was a great author and that it was a shame that he only rose to popularity and fame after his passing. And so you can use tone to suss that out a little bit. But also, after you have used your tone to suss out which of the answer choices kind of sound the best and sound to agree with the most with the tone, then you go for the silver bullet, which there's very few silver bullets on the MCAT. It's more like a thousand BBs, right? Thousand golden BBs. But the main idea is the closest thing we have to it. So next, find whichever answer choice agrees most with usually the main idea or the argument that's being asked about in the passage or the argument that's being asked about in the question stem. So with any MCAT question that you read, and this is something that we teach and it's in our CARS program, it's the idea that you really need to first identify 
if the question is asking you about an argument or the main idea. Because once you have that identified, it's a lot easier to eliminate some answer choices that sound good because almost all the answer choices are true or they pull quotations and statements from the passage that are true, but they're just taken out of a context or they don't answer the question that's being asked. So that's how you answer the according to the passage question stems. First, you identify is this testing? The main idea is just testing an argument. Second, you make sure that you utilize your tone to go through the answer choices. Rule out the ones that don't agree with the tone of the passage. And lastly, take either your main idea or the argument that's being questioned in the question stem and apply it to the answer choices and see which one agrees with it the most. The second question type is one that you should never ever miss. And it's the ones that are asking for which of these statements, which of these ideas, et cetera, is most or least supported by passage evidence. Now, what we have to discuss in this is what support looks like on the MCAT. Most commonly support on the MCAT looks like length of description, so how long they talked about it. So if they talked about an argument for two paragraphs, that's very supported. If the argument is the main idea, it's the most supported. So there's really three ways that they identify support. You've got the main idea, that's the most supported, the second most common way that they do it is length of discussion. If they talk about the same argument for two, three paragraphs, that's a very supported argument. And the third one is what I call an appeal to authority. And so that's whenever they bring in an outside like historian or something like that, or someone that they speak about positively in the passage and they quote that person. So if you see quotations, it is usually in support or contradiction of an argument. So whenever a question is asking for which of these is most supported, you're first looking for the main idea, then you're looking for the one. If the main idea is not there, then you're looking for the argument that was talked about the most. And if all of those are equal, then you're looking for one that includes author's quotations. I know your brain's probably going a little nuts. They usually don't have all three of those or even two of those as answer choices. But if there were, then I would go in that order. And the questions they're asking about which of these is least supported is kind of just the inverse of that. So they're gonna ask you which of these arguments is least supported. They're gonna have the main idea in there to detract you. That's obviously not it. Then they're gonna have three tr very true arguments that were all in the passage. And one of them is just going to be an uh, like an argument that was very blatantly stated, and that's gonna be not discussed a lot. It was just kind of like a little one or two sentence little argument. A lot of times it's at the end of the passage, and it's kind of like a little throwaway. That will usually be your correct answer. And usually that answer choice, this is not 100% true, but usually that answer choice will be almost word for word from the passage, whereas the incorrect answer choices that they want you to pick are not going to be word for word from the passage, but they're gonna be like kind of like a rewording of the argument. So if we were to take those three levels of support that I discussed earlier, the main idea, like an extensive discussion of an argument, and then some kind of like appeal to authority, there for these three answer choices, if the question is a least supported answer, these are all incorrect answer choices, right? So for those three answer choices, they're probably going to kind of rephrase the words so that it doesn't look as familiar to you because they want you to pick it. Whereas the one that is the correct answer choice may be verbatim from the passage. It's just it wasn't talked about a lot. And a lot of times it's the last argument in the passage and that's because they're leaning on recency bias, hoping that you're like, well, I remember that in the passage. So there's no way it could be the least supported. It can be and it usually is. Kind of the origins of this new project of going through and dissecting the different cars question styles is because of the two new products that we released. And one of them is we're going through and we're breaking down every AAMC full length exam passage and question so that you can have the experience of sitting down with a personal tutor and having us walk through every single question with you for like 30 cents a question or something like that. So we've looked at like everything the AAMC has produced on cars, not to mention the, you know, I guess between the two of us now we have over a decade of tutoring experience. And when we notice these patterns, we wanted to pull them out. We wanted to put them in a document because we have trained our second product that we've worked on, which is our CARS AI tutor to write questions according to the AAMC style. Now the CARS AI tutor is, in all honesty, I think the solution to your CARS prep to cars prep period. There's nothing on the market like it. It is literally an AI that you have unlimited access to that we have trained to teach and tutor exactly like we do in personal tutoring. 
So you will go through the four drills that we take students through in personal tutoring and you will answer questions and prompts and it will give you WMC style passages and it will ask you to complete the drills and then it will give you feedback just like we would give in personal tutoring. We trained it with our voice, we trained it with the missions that we find important, including encouraging students, creating good habits, and being efficient in getting through cars. And then at the end of it, we have tacked on unlimited practice questions and solutions that not only mimic pretty flawlessly WMC style passages, but now we have incorporated these question styles. So the questions read exactly like the WMC, and the AI is also going to respond specifically to the incorrect answer choice that you picked and tell you why it's likely that you picked that answer choice, what was probably attractive to you about it, why it was wrong, and why the correct answer is correct. So it's pretty freaking awesome. I will be rolling out all of these. This, uh, these little question styles are not something that we're gonna keep behind a paywall. Um, but it, you know, we release videos once a week and I only publish every other week. So it may take some time before we get through all of them, but if you want access to them, if you want some kind of cars tutor, if you were just deciding, you know, new year, new me, it's time to make this change. It's time to get this score at whatever cost. They are all loaded into the cars AI tutor. So you will have access to that. It's taken us two years, a lot of early mornings and late nights during medical school to make it, but I really think it's worth it. I really think that it will help create more future doctors like yourself watching this video. And that's the whole goal of this, you know. I'm sure you know my story um, by now, but you may not. I, I took the MCAT four times, kept me out of medical school for uh, over two years, and I know I'm not the only one that that's happened to. And now that I'm in here, I'm a very good medical student, and I'm soon to be pretty good doctor. And it's unfortunate that this test kept me from being a doctor for two years. And I'm lucky that I was stubborn enough to stick with it because not everybody is. And while I've been fortunate enough to have good mentors and pass the exam and now tutor my future colleagues, not everybody is that lucky. And so it's, it's my goal that we don't waste another year or two of you being able to treat patients because you're trying to get this MCAT thing figured out. It's my goal that we just help you knock it out once and for all. Because the thing is, we, we really do need more doctors. And we don't just need doctors that went to the best undergraduate colleges. That's not the most important part of this to me because I, I, I'm not even convinced that the doctors are the smartest people in the world anymore. I mean, I know that you have to have a certain level of intelligence to become a doctor, but really Really what you what you truly have to have to be a doctor in, in my experience is a lot of grit. You have to have a strong work ethic. And if you can pair work ethic with a good compassionate heart and a good reason to want to be a doctor, which I know you have, otherwise you wouldn't be looking on YouTube how to pass the MCAT, then I want you as my colleague because I'm going to be a surgeon and there's a lot of things I've already forgotten. But I know that you will be the internal medicine doctor or you will be the cardiologist, or you will be the OBGYN that I'm gonna to need to send my patients to, and I need good doctors with good hearts. And I think that that's you. There's a lot of steps to get there, and the MCAT is the first hurdle. This is not even the end. You know, everything that is really good in life is available and it's achievable, but it's usually on the other side of 10 years of just working your butt off. And so you're just getting started. I guess you're, you're probably about a quarter of the way through finishing your undergraduate education but I wanna make sure that you don't get discouraged and end up in a career in 10 years or end up at your 10 year high school reunion and telling people, I wanted to be a doctor. Just be one, we'll help you. We're gonna get you there. Whatever you need, we're gonna help you. I want more colleagues. I want colleagues with good hearts and I think that that's you. However you think that we can help you, leave a comment in the description. And if you like this video, share it with someone that needs to hear it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.